Hello, good afternoon everyone. My name is Darren. I'm your host for today's webinars. A big welcome and thank you for joining us uh, on our annual design forum. This year, due to uh, the, the COVID-19 situations, we have to turn our offline event to online instead. In fact, this forum will be hosted into four sections on every first week of the month with different uh, exciting topics. In the next uh, 60 minutes, we will focus on embedded innovations and design services, HAI, IoT clouds, and we will also share some of the real world success uh, application stories as well. For your information, this webinar will be recorded and uh, we will send the video and the PowerPoint slide to everyone here after the webinar. Kindly mute your mic during the webinar sections and uh, there will be a Q&A uh, sections at the end. But feel free to post your question in the chat box. Uh, lastly, I need a favor from all of you to help us to fill up a short survey after the webinar sections. So without further ado, let's kickstart the sections with a short video. I hope you enjoy the video. Now it's our honor to invite the director for Channel Scale and Partners, Mr. Arunava from Intel. He has uh, 22 years of sales, marketing and leadership experience in Asia, PAX and Japan region. Let's welcome Ar Arunava. Is hey, it? thank you, Darren. Yep, no problem. Uh, just a quick one. I just want to confirm that my slide is visible and I'm audible. Yes, we can see. Okay. Okay, thank you again. Uh, a very good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Arunava, as Darren uh, introduced. I, I know sometimes it's it's difficult uh, to, to kind of pronounce that right. I, I always uh, say that, you know, you can always refer to me by my initials, that's AC. Uh, I manage the partner and scale team uh, for Intel in the APJ territory, which is primarily focused on uh, Southeast Asia, Australia, New Zealand markets. As uh, Darren also mentioned, I mean, we are meeting on this uh, virtual platform amidst an unprecedented pandemic uh, that has affected all of us globally. So I, I definitely want to start off with a big thank you uh, for being here today. We completely uh, understand the unprecedented and challenging times and circumstances that, that this presents for us, right? For yourselves, your organization, uh, as well as your families. So first of all, I would like to start off with best wishes for the safety and good health for yourselves, your loved ones, and all your team members in your organization. I also take the opportunity to thank uh, Team Advantech for the partnership and for having us here to present. Now, speaking of uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, I think on one hand, it's it's plundering through countries. Right? It's, it's practically left no corner of the world or the globe untouched. But I think on the other hand, uh, an important one for us is really to look at the value and the need for technology and, and the need for solutions that has been felt now like never before, right? I mean, for things that we are seeing very close to our day-to-day -day engagements and interactions, uh, in, in whatever form that we are trying to do. I mean, just even going out to a supermarket and, you know, working through, you know, contact tracing apps and thermal sensors and scanners. And, and obviously for, for those affected, the healthcare services in general and the use of, uh, use of technology there. I think even coming out of COVID, uh, and, and, and I hope that happens sometime soon, it, it's going to become the norm. I think, you know, whether it is social distancing, and, and various other ways in which communities kind of go about managing this situation until we find a, a once and for all end to this through a vaccine. It's, it's, it's going to be a huge amount of need for technology. And I think that really is, is a segue for me to look at uh, the, the next piece, which I want to kind of talk about how uh, it's transforming the way we live and work. If, if you kind of start off, and I'll kind of look at this as, you know, helping save lives as, as we speak, and we are seeing that, as I just mentioned, you know, connecting people and technology in the healthcare and, and medical space. But obviously it expands a lot more, and, and all of you in some way or the other are engaged with customers or ecosystem that's essentially transforming this. So I'm in, in, in a lot of ways preaching to the choir, but it's it's really about how the overall way to live and work changes improving quality of life, enhancing public safety, uh, helping productivity optimization across industries. 
uh, improving and 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 lowering cost efficiencies, which I think makes businesses across verticals uh, create a differentiation and competitiveness. A very critical one is also the last one that you see on this slide is is about protecting our planet, right? And there are a whole host of stuff that are being put by countries in in terms of managing tracking, tracing wildlife, managing you know e ecosystem and environment sustenance. Uh, saving coral reefs and so on and so forth, which which we are already seeing in execution and in play today. Now, IoT offers a, a massive potential uh, for the society and businesses at large uh, to build more connected, secure, and an engaging world. Now, with this in the background, let's let's take a look at what this means with respect to the IoT strategy. So, if you look at the uh, the overall strategy for Intel, which we uh, uh, there is a fallout of that to, to on this particular page, but I think the background really from an Intel's broad corporate strategy is based around what we call as the data centric business. And on what that is, what that really is about how are we going to look at our engagement in businesses with our ecosystem, with customers, leveraging data at the core of that strategy. It's, it's really about processing, analyzing and, and storing data and hence offering technologies that enable people to do that in the most efficient manner to which which enable decision making to address and solve problems that that exist on the ground. So coming closer to to the topic and scope here is is really the IoT strategy, which is which is uh, a deeper dive on on that front. You see kind of uh, three pillars on on the slide that I'm showing up here. The first one really is about high performance compute. Now, if you, if you kind of think about it from that standpoint, this is kind of the core of Intel's business. The, but I will kind of translate this back to how it is more meaningful in the IoTG world in, in a few minutes. The second one is really about workload convergence at the edge. And what that really talks about is the consolidation of workloads at the edge. I mean, you saw the video and you'll have my co-presenter Edwin talk a lot more about AI inferencing at the edge as well. I, I think this is really the crux of where a big part of Intel's play is, is, is today. And I will talk a little bit more about what that means and how that is, is, is part of that ingredient that we are building for the solutions to address that problem. The third part of it related to this is also a critical catalyst across market segments that we see. Uh, which is around vision and AI at the edge. Now, you also, also see two horizontals at, at the bottom, which on, on one hand, the first one is about providing uh, a seamless developer experience as solutions are built on Intel technologies and platforms. I will talk about this a little bit more later on my presentation, because that truly is, is a significant part of, of what we offer as the value to our ecosystem, and I'm, I'm going to talk more in detail, but this is in a sense the most critical part of the solution building with Intel platforms and silicon at the core. The second very important aspect of, of that that you see on this horizontal is also the ecosystem development and the partnership that's required to deliver uh, repeatable solutions. We call them market-ready solutions. It's essentially in a way saying that we've deployed a solution with a customer in a specific vertical to solve one problem, how can we replicate some of these solutions to similar customers in the same segments and, and hence make it you know, replicable and repeatable in that sense, based on the understanding that we have gained through partnership with our ecosystem in doing so. Right? And this is really the center point and theme of my presentation. What it means in, in, in slightly sim simpler terms is, is kind of three things. One, it's first of all solving the key vertical market challenges. It's kind of an outside in view looking at what the customer's problems are, what is what is their need and building a solution with our partners to go and solve those problems. Simple, simple uh, in, in the way that it's stated, but it requires a, 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 an orchestration of various different aspects of uh, you know, technologies that needs to come together to be able to go and solve that. The second one is partnering with the ecosystem, and that's a, a, a very critical part of the orchestration as well, because this is really about working with a very broad ecosystem of players and market leaders 
to ensure that we are bringing the right kind of vertical segment solution that that enables solving that customer problem that I spoke about on 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 the top one. And last but not the least, I think that the most critical piece is the fact that yes, there is a there is a silicon play or there is a hardware play, but I think it's very important to also look at understanding and differentiating that further with the systems and solutions design, which requires a very importantly a developer experience because at the end of the day there is an application need which which leverages all the data that's coming through irrespective of any of the segments that you talk about and this is not necessarily a comprehensive list of uh, list of all segments that you're seeing here on this slide but it essentially is is about seeing how do we really solve the challenges of customers that are in each of these segments and able to ensure that we are helping them address their customers challenges or be better in the in the way that they take services to their customers or make their processes and businesses more efficient two areas that i'm going to uh, you know spend some time on in the next couple of couple of slides one is really about the the intelligent edge that that you're going to, you're going to probably see, keep seeing through this uh, webinar Okay, so I think I was starting off with talking about what edge compute really means. I, I think it's it's a lot about you know bringing the compute performance across applications and data from from one point of the the network to more uh, logical points, which kind of en ensures that we are you know shifting the overall analysis, analytics, and and processing capabilities to where the data is coming from and where the data is going to be con consumed, which, which is towards the purpose of ensuring decision-making capabilities that are brought in, right? And, and this would apply across vertical segments that, that I was referring to on the previous slide. Uh, a distributed model is essentially driven by needs for you know, uh, reduced latency, bandwidth cost, availability, and, and higher levels of security. I think you saw that on the video that Darren played earlier as well. And then not to forget, I think there's the other very important part of, of, of this entire thing, which, which, which is the wrapper, uh, that's the network connectivity. And as I mentioned, I think there is significant growth in the IoT segments driven in a way, in a big way by the vision applications, which is one of the reasons why on that three pillar strategy that we talked about, vision and AI becomes a very critical part of that strategy. And, and as we speak, by the way, and this isn't even a future futuristic data point, as we speak, almost 45% of data that's created on different IoT platforms is either stored, processed, or analyzed, and most importantly, actioned at, at, uh, actioned at the edge. Now, this architectural shift provides huge opportunities for all of us, and, and that's where the edge compute and, and AI at the edge or inferencing at the edge becomes very, very critical. Now, from a product perspective, uh, what what we have is, and this is a very simplified version, by the way, uh, for the purpose of, of this particular presentation, but you can obviously reach out to us for more information about everything that, that resides under each of these category of products. But what I would kind of want to leave here with is that we are focused on, on providing future-proof products that meet the vertical needs through our overall IoT roadmap. And it's a wide range of products, starting with uh, from, a, from a processor standpoint with the Atom at one end all the way uh, to, to Xeon. And, and each category or family of processors are supported by a very wide range of performance points with using common codes, right? It's, it's, it's about new applications, uh, encryption and analytics capabilities and needs that kind of drive the IoT needs for higher levels of performance and compute headroom. Now, one of the critical pieces here to understand also is, you know, Intel's DNA has always been about creating standards, and, and that applies across all of these. So these are processors that are optimized for IoT applications, taking into account those specific needs that I talked about, whether it is, you know, security, uh, always on, manageability features, and enabling some of the AI capabilities out there as well. And the second part of that focus Kind of leads to you know creating consistent developer and environment uh, a developer environment which is you know with a scalable software stack because as as solutions are de are developed on on Intel's platforms it is extremely critical to ensure that 
we work closely with that community to ensure that we have solutions that 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 work best on Intel platform. So there are a whole bunch of developer kits, SDKs, and various other forms of optimization tools that are uh, that are that are part of that uh, entire stack and enablement approach that we take. We also have acquired uh, IoT centric IPs uh, to drive key technology, specifically a family of workload accelerators that you see here uh, for high performance at low power, right? Through our uh, FPGA uh, solutions and Movidius. Now I'll, I'll, I'll you know, move to the last segment of my uh, presentation because I've kind of referred to this multiple times in terms of talking about the, the developer uh, enablement and I think this slide kind of gives a summary of that. It's it's really a very critical aspect and, and that's kind of the, the key and at the center of our IoT transformation. It's a it's a quick overview of sorts that you see on this slide. Obviously no surprise to anyone on this forum. Developers are an extremely critical part of the ecosystem as we are influencing technology and product and solutions design decisions, right? This again is also another approach where we are taking an outside in view to understand their needs for the problem that they are trying to solve. It takes, it takes a lot of time and, and, and resources to explore, uh, prototype, optimize, and deploy IoT solutions or any solutions, any technology solutions for that matter. And Intel really helps in that journey to ensure that the developer gets started faster with access to software tools and other support to make most of the platforms products and in, in, in thereby best leveraging the, the silicon technology that, that, that we are known for. And at every point in that process, the Intel developer zone st serves as kind of a one-stop shop for anything that is IoT and, and, and thereby reducing time from prototyping to production. So that's pretty much what I had in, 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 in this 10 minutes of presentation. It's, it's kind of a broad overview from our overall strategy and how we are engaging and transforming some of the ecosystem enablement approaches from our side. I do thank you once again uh, for joining this webinar. Before I hand it back to Darren, I do want to pause and call out our incredible partnership with Advantech. We encourage you to leverage the uh, IoT products and solutions coming from our partnership with Advantech. You will hear a lot more uh, details through the rest of this webinar when my co-presenter Edwin comes on. Uh, do reach out to us and our local reps in your markets to uh, engage with us. Uh, before, I, before I go, just want to say stay safe, stay healthy, and carry on. Thank you once again. Thanks, Darren. Thank you, AC, for taking time to share with us uh, some interesting strategy and insight from Intel. Intel is one of our very significant uh, ecosystem partners, especially to Avantech uh, embedded IoT sectors. Next, let, let me introduce our regional sales manager for ASEAN region, uh, Mr. Edwin Teo. Edwin is a very passionate person about new trends and technologies. By leveraging his years of experience in embedded IoT sectors, he has successfully deployed many projects in various vertical markets with uh, appropriate channel ecosystem partners like Intel and also other system integrator and etc. Now let's welcome Edwin. Edwin please. Thanks uh, AC and Darren for the intro. Okay this is the first session for our series of uh, Advantech Online Embedded Design in Forum. Uh, we shall be covering different topics for each of the session and for this first session we are elaborating more on our value-added services that can aid equipment manufacturers for their new and future product design. Basically, this session is more for uh, equipment makers, those who, who usually tends to uh, customize boards. So when I say uh, equipment makers, it can mean to, uh, like those you use for life science, you create certain equipment such as PCR or images, or you may have industrial printers, or sometimes you also may be using it in a kiosk or, or certain other uh, equipments that is actually meant for delicated purposes. Okay, so for the computing portion in this kind of uh, equipments, uh, typically what we see is usually the, the embedded board and also the display, okay, and also certain peripherals. Okay, so let's look into how most equipment makers, uh, when you are looking into building a system, a product, when they look into the board level, typically, uh, uh, most will choose standard boards. 
in fact, most of the IPC makers, uh, most of the boards, I would say, uh, are designed for generic purposes where around 60% of the market uh, uh, uses standard boards. Okay? However, there are cases whereby due to certain unique, maybe say certain unique I.O. requirements, uh, such as maybe you also need some delicated uh, FPGA processors or co-processors, or, or, you, or sometimes your end customer will demand you to put it in a far more smaller form factor, which you can't find on a standard product. Then in that kind of scenario, uh, most of the equipment makers will go for a computer or module type of design, a COM design, computer or module design. So how this works is basically, I have a main CPU module in certain recognized uh, standards, and then I mate it to another board, uh, a secondary board, which is, will be stacked below. It's called a career board. So this typically around 30% of customers or equipment makers go for that option. This is actually a, a, a situation where there's something that you, you can't find in the market that easily or you have to customize. But there are also customers who do this for intellectual property protection. They want to do some design know-how in their carrier board. Okay, so and they want, they want it to be uh, their own IP. Okay, there are also cases where customers go for fully customized board. This is assuming that it's really even smaller or maybe uh, very, very unique and they have the mass volume to substantiate this. So these are the usual way people go for this kind of design. Okay, but what are the key challenges uh, for most of those uh, product makers or, or equipment makers? So number one, there are few, there are, let, let's look at a few challenges. Uh. First is, is this upgradable? Is this modular? Cost structure? Okay, and most important, how fast time to market, especially if you're going to develop your own. You have to think of how fast time to market in a sense of how long it's going to take to build the item from EVT to DVT to PVT stage and then all the way to Mass Pro. What kind of certifications are needed? And what kind of software tools does uh, the vendors uh, like, or suppliers like Advantech, uh, which can help shorten the development time, timeline? So what, so what Advantech does is that we have a very comprehensive approach to do this. We call this, uh, we call this the, our embedded core design in services. Okay, so this is a very quick overview of what we provide. This embedded core design services is basically is a series of hardware and software add-on services that enhances our embedded board solutions. It's actually to help you speed up your system integration and time to market. Okay, it's not just hardware enhancement. We actually bundle a lot of software services or firmware modification. So you can see from here, this is actually all more on the on the board level or the system level. And then from here, we do actually add on more value added uh, software services. I'll elaborate more later. A device on remote management portal and many others add on. And in the peripheral side, okay, we also have many industrial displays, wireless modules, uh, flash and RAM. Okay, all these is more of an I.O. peripheral. Okay, uh, when you do a design, the typical concerns that you have for most I.O. peripheral is how long is my product uh, availability? How many years can this vendor support you? So I'll elaborate more on this later. We also have certain modular structure like this, MIOE. It's a very innovative concept. I'll elaborate more on this in the later slide. And also, uh, like what AC mentioned, we also provide certain AI acceleration module Literaging uh, Intel Mobius. We have it in different form factor. We have it in M2, uh, Mini PCIe, and also in uh, PCIe times 4. And in the future, we will also be supporting Kimbe. Uh, that should be out sometime around Q4 this year. Okay, so <clears throat> these are some of a very quick breath of what we, we provide. Okay, I will be covering more on the AI acceleration module in, uh, I mentioned we've got four sessions. So one of the sessions in the later part, we will be covering this in much more in depth. Okay. Now, as a global leader in the embedded market, we actually provide a full spectrum of embedded boards, ranging from single board computers such as PC-104, as you can see from here, okay, 3.5 inch, the ever popular one, Pico ITX, Mini ITX, and recently the new UTX, and also many computer or module types of design, such as Com Express, Smart, Q7, or RTX, and then there are also other new ones that will be releasing soon, new standards are releasing like Com HPC. 
Okay. Through the years, we have also partnered with many other companies to finalize common standards for adoption. And even came up with some innovative design okay, that actually helped to address certain uh, pain points. Okay. So what differentiates us in, in certain manners when it comes to this kind of uh, equipment maker's design? Okay. First, we actually provide quite a number of ruggedized add-on add services. For example, on the top, we have the white operating temperature solution. Okay. So when we say white operating temperature solution, okay, there are actually many embedded board manufacturers offering white temperature supported boards. What differentiates us is that during testing, okay, prior to delivery, we conduct 100% quality inspection and white operating temperature test. That means we put into a temperature chamber and go for test. If assuming this customer, customer A, uh, are going to purchase 200 units of white temperature range boards, we actually send all 200 units for individual tests, go put in the temperature chamber, and after that, deliver after when it's passed. Okay, now, uh, contrary to many IPC makers in the industry, in fact, they don't do this. They basically do lot sizing. So assuming that you have 200 sets of bots, uh, maybe they extract 50 sets out, they go for the test. If that 50 sets pass, the entire 200 sets pass. It's called lot sizing. We don't do that. We do 100% quality inspection. Okay. In terms of anti-vibration, we I won't say we go for military grade in terms of board level because typically military grade is usually system level test. It's not just board level. But what we do is that we enhance the board by having a thicker board, a 2 mm thick board instead of 1.6. Uh, and we also do certain, uh, some of our boards also actually pass hot tests, highly accelerated live testing. Conformal coating is quite common also. In fact, about 20% of our sales uh, or our customers ask for conformal coating. It can be uh, acrylic, uterine, epoxy, silicon. It really depends on the environment that you're going to use. And one key differentiator, one key important differentiator is that we actually, you, our boards are certified to IPCA 610G Class 3. Most board is Class 2. Okay. Now, what is this Class 3? Actually, under the IPC class, uh, class 3 is, is the highest. It's, it means an es electronic assembly must be built in accordance to all IPC criteria, such as uh, your laminate selection, your plate thickness, your material qualification, or your processors and inspection. All these need to be audited. Uh. Even the soldering joint, uh, to pass it is actually tougher. Okay, So who are the customers? There are certain customers, such as those in the vertical, such as uh, aerospace, defense, military, yeah? or certain customers who really value high reliability. Okay, They do not want, like say, high vibration or any other issues that can create problems or that degrade the bots. They will demand for Class 3. So currently for Taiwan, in Taiwan, Avantech is the only company so far at the moment that has Class 3 certification. Okay, And this is a, there is a frequent audit process. Okay. Now let's look into... Uh, besides on the on the hardware platform, let's look into some of the software enhancement that uh, Advantech provides. So the first one is our trusted embedded BIOS selection. It's, to simply put, it's more of a BIOS customization service. Basically, it allows you to change a lot of features, such as boot up logo, display configuration, and security setting. We have more than 50 BIOS engineers just in Advantech itself. Okay. We have standard processes to manage all BIOS customization requirements. All modifications are stored in our database for a minimum of 10 years. So that means if you want to upgrade your system in the future, you can easily reference to previous configuration and port over similar modification on newer platform. This helps minimize risk and time needed for system upgrade. And we also do some uh, enhancements such as uh, Intel Boot Guard and even Intel SGX implementation. These are actually more add-on security. We do also encounter some customers who ask for very fast boot up time, which we can optimize by uh, removing certain features in the post, post uh, uh, process. Okay, so do get in touch with us if you really need certain level of BIOS customization. Another value add on service is our embedded features API. So, what, what I would term this is more, we, we, we actually call this uh, I Manager. We have a small embedded controller on our bots that actually fulfill certain of these functions. Okay, why? Because one key pain that uh, we observe for every new project uh, actually lies between the OS and the BIOS. Okay, and also to talk to your application. 
we, we need to interface certain hardware features with the application software on certain new platform. So we, we call this, uh, so previously, if you want to do this, I say you have to really understand the, the firmware, you have to really understand the hardware features. Okay, so uh, and then you may need to do hard coding. So what we did to simplify the whole process is that we have a software platform we call iManager. It gives you this ability to link your application software to various hardware features, such as, for example, GPIO, watchdog timer, smart fan, brightness control. This software actually sits between the BIOS and the OS layer. So previously, uh, if you want to do this, it takes a long development efforts because you need to really understand the codes. You sometimes may even need to program in assembly language. So what we do is that we give you some uh, SDK uh, API that you can that can help software programmer to simplify this whole effort or entire process. We provide actually a CBS or unified API. What you need to do is to link your application feature to our embedded feature API. Then your bot can run as much as you wish. And then moreover, uh, one key feature, our APIs are actually cross-platform compatible. So that you can actually port your application from old bot to new bot or even through different OS. Okay, so it's a very easy, fast upgrade development uh, utility. And in fact, there are quite a number of equipment makers that we encountered that really likes this feature. It really helps save their development time and effort. Another uh, add-on software, just like I mentioned the BIOS and our iManager. Okay, we, another one is basically uh, our WisePass device on. Okay, what is this software about? Basically, it's to do remote device management. As you know, in this age of IoT, one of the key features in IoT is basically remote management. So you may want to remotely manage your devices. So how to effectively remotely manage a device? You need to know what's the actual real-time status of your devices. If any devices is giving you, uh, or, or your HPC, are they giving you some issues that you can prevent or preventive measures? Okay, some key benefits is basically like uh, to drive down maintenance costs. So. What we do with WisePass device on is to help customers to link their IoT application devices together, enable remote control, remote management features such as uh, OTA, power on off, screenshots, or even remote KVM. Okay, so we, we provide many, many functions. Okay, so let me elaborate more on some of the key functions that uh, is that we have on our device on. First, first portion, real-time monitoring. You have, you've been talking about device management. So real-time monitoring is a very, very important case. So what you see on the slides here is a very good screenshot of what we have. You can re refer to our actual user interface. You click on the device list at the left. You can have a quick glance of all the devices you are managing and their actual status. Is it on? Is it off? Or, or is it giving you some other issues? Or you can click on the actual edge device that you want to, to go in and to see deeper detail such as CPU performance, uh, your memory usage, okay, uh, your temperature, operating temperature over there. Uh, you can also trigger certain set point. Okay, if it's up to a certain degree, it's overheating, send a trigger or alert to you. Even the hard disk preventive maintenance is also shown here. And some customers do feedback, this is a very useful feature. Why? Because before the hard disk fail, uh, usually this will give you some indication already. Okay, so this is like preempt. In case your hard disk fail, you can quickly do certain preventive measure first, go and replace uh, if it's needed. Okay, you can actually address certain, uh, you can actually do prevents fault uh, from arising. Okay, now another uh, aspect is security control. So what does this do? Security control of your devices okay, is, is actually very useful. There are a few key features on it. Let's look at some of it. Uh, power, remote power management. Now, most of our uh, platform right now, nowadays, uh, if your system have some error, failure, your system will auto shut down. Now, just imagine if your this embedded edge device is mount in a hard to reach area, maybe too tall or too deep, or in certain area that access, uh, the access you're going to open up a, a few doors, or maybe mount in a very remote uh, environment or location. Now, you want to have to go down physically to turn on and off. I think this is not something that you want to do. So what we do is that you can do a remote power turn on and off of the system, okay, uh, and to check what could be some issues that you have. We have a hardware watchdog. This watchdog actually we divide into two types, a single watchdog or a triple watchdog. Single watchdog typically is hard reset. Triple watchdog is that you can tie to your application program. If your application is the one that, that is creating the hang, you restart the application program. 
Second stage will be soft reset. Third stage, hard reset. And then if assuming your NH device is running on Windows uh, embedded OS, like Windows 10 IoT, we also provide certain Windows lockdown control and protection features all on all over here. So it's actually much more easier to use. Okay. And beyond this, we also added in some third party useful software tools. Okay. What, what are the, the tools? We show you two of them, Acronis and McAfee. Acronis is actually more for backup and recovery. So it's, it's that you when you deploy to site, you're going to back up your original image. And maybe through the course of using your app, you may encounter issue if a new software maybe create a software crash or system crash. You can use this image and recover in minutes. Okay. Now, this is a very useful tool. Why? When you deploy to site, assuming this system is down, if you want to reinstall, you found it's a huge issue, you want to reinstall, it will take you hours. Your customer will be fuming mad there. Okay, so this is a very fast recovery. Actually, you can recover in just in minutes. Now, Mafi application control is not really an antivirus. It's not blacklisting. It's actually a whitelisting software. So it basically, to cut a long story short, is only allow authorized software to run on your system. Okay, in in that way, if someone else want to put in an authorized software, it's not in that whitelist. It won't run. Okay, we do have a Mafi manager. Uh, that can allow you to authorize your own application updates if you need. It's also a, a way to protect against viruses, Trojan horse, or malware. Because typically when you look at uh, viruses, Trojan horse, and malware, they are also self-executable files, and normally they're hidden as scripts. If you have a fresh installation, you run this already, um, every application control, you already authorize only those applications that's allowed to run to run. Now, if, if your technician put a USB thumb drive or connect to internet or whatever, have a virus that comes in, they cannot execute because it's not authorized to run. So if there's a way to protect against virus definition, uh, virus, in, you do not need to do updates. Okay, so it's a different concept. It's called whitelisting concept. This is also a very useful tool. Another one, diagnostic. So just now I mentioned about remote desktop. I can also do remote KVM. I can connect in and I can add a, like team viewer mode. I can co to do uh, remote troubleshooting in a way or debugging. Okay, you can also set certain uh, set point. If assuming your system is over voltage, over current, or over temp, uh, trigger alert to you. And when you say trigger alert, we have a few notification service. You can use things like Line, WeChat, WhatsApp, up to you to configure or even to your own email. SMS uh, is feasible, but normally I don't advise it because uh, we use Kikertel software. There is certain charge uh, when you're running SMS. Okay, for for this usage. Now this is just on the software differentiation. Let's look into the hardware differentiation. Uh, what make our single board computer unique or special? Okay, so we first, our PCB thickness is actually 2 mm, like I mentioned earlier. Many vendors actually go by 1.6 mm. A 2 mm is thicker, okay, is uh, for, vi for vibration actually also better. For signal integrity, also better because your trace can be bigger, thicker, and can withstand the high, higher temp temperature difference. And we use a better, higher rating, TG rating motherboards. Okay, the PCB type. Uh, TG is actually transition to glass. The higher the rating, the better it can protect against warping if after prolonged use in high temperature environment. We do have many vendors going for TG125 or 135. Our ESD level 4, most of our bots, not all, most of our bots actually certify for ESB level 4. It's the highest level for electrostatic discharge. Normally, the customers who ask for this, uh, uh, who value this, are those in the life science or railway or certain uh, verticals where EMI, EMC are very particular about. We do have a quite, we do have a secure mount. We do screw on type mounting for our coolers. So, in, so it's not press to fit type. Our cap that we use, our solid cap that we use, we use even higher grade X7R that can withstand wider temperature and also higher frequency fluctuation. And one unique new uh, features that we have for the past few years that, that a lot of customers like is our MIUE expansion, multi-input output extension. So you see from here at the side, it's basically a high density connector. This high density connector pull out a few signal. You can use to build your own uh, daughter board. Okay, so we have a ready board and then you just build your own daughter board. So this is a very unique uh, function. It actually helps actually cut down your development time. Okay, we, besides that, we, the software add-on, like I mentioned earlier. Now, this MIOE extension, how basically it works. 
many equipment makers wants to customize your own board. And typically, if you want to customize your own board, uh, the standard first thing that usually comes to mind is using a computer or module approach. But a computer or module is a CPU module. They don't give you any I.O. ports. You have to pull the signal out. You have to create uh, your own career board. It takes a long development time. Okay, so what this does, the MIOE, is that it has a ready board at the top. With this high density connector and with all those signals, you can pull down and create your own daughter board. We do have standard boards like those below. These are our own standard boards. But you can also create your own. Okay, we have a design guide with two kits. It's up to you to decide how you want to design. You just imagine if you, I run a computer or module. It can take me uh, three months to four months, come out the board, testing, get it mass pro. Uh, whereas this takes you maybe one or two months, you can come out a career board. Already. You can come out a daughter board easily. And then imagine uh, you can actually make two different boards. So I can use a standard board that's ready. And maybe for this project, I use this type of uh, board. Maybe another project, I use another type. So it's, it's modular structure. Okay, so this, this is actually a very uh, unique uh, differentiator that we have. Now it comes to uh, industrial motherboards. Uh, these are the typical standard industrial motherboards. Like uh, I think you all seen mini ITX around, uh, micro ATX also. Uh, we, we do came out recently with a smaller form factor. Okay, we call it UTX. This is, a very, this is actually a small palm size board okay, with ultra compact design. And what differentiates our industrial box? We design our industrial box for different vertical actually. Okay. So, uh, for example, if I, I'm playing, I'm used in a kiosk environment. I need a lot of com. I need a lot of USB because I need to connect to interface to a lot of barcode reader, scanner, printer. Uh, all these use more USB and com, or even touchscreen also use USB or com. Okay. Uh, we have bots that go for ESD level four. We have customers who go for medical application. In fact, we do about three or four projects dealing with this uh, wide voltage range uh, wide operating temperature also have negative 20 to 70 class b is usually asked for if you're running wireless okay, because uh, some application for running wireless you want to have class b certification it makes it easier to pass so these are some and then we also have delicate boss that for gaming they have more authentication control now those that I discussed previously is all on just uh, normal single board computers with the enhancement. Now let's look into the computer on module. This is basically a two piece board design. I have a CPU module like those you see here, and then I can mount to another carrier board. Okay, so this, this type of design normally customers want to customize more stuff. And there are many standards for this. It comes in different form factor. And through the years, some has already phased out. Like ETX, nowadays you don't see that because there's no PCI Express. Okay, so or XDX already gone. So now there are more and more newer stuff like computer Com Express, Smart Q7, and they comes out in different versions. And each version actually they have some they have differences in their pin defined. Okay, for example, uh, then uh, the recent one, the latest one is actually Smart 2.1 was actually rectified in March this year. Okay, they are backward compatible. They are the for the Smart series actually backward compatible 2.0. We will see bots coming out at 2.1 sometime uh, closer to end of this year. Okay, Com Express, we have a Type 7 that's last year. And now uh, there's a new standard, it's called Com HPC over here. Okay, this is high performance compute. Now, why this Com HPC came out? Uh, actually, it came out because, as you know, nowadays people look uh, the hot topic 5G AI. You need to support headless application. You need to support multiple PCIe bus, maybe 64, 48 bus, higher memory bandwidth. Okay, you uh you maybe you want to add in the PCIe Express bus, maybe it's for more accelerator cards or more function, more feature. Your Ethernet bus, maybe you need to run 100 G. So this is uh is to cover that high high end acceleration market. And you'll be there'll be five bots for this and divided into COM HPC client and com hpc uh, server okay three three bots three different types of size for com hpc client and two different sites for com hpc server so our com module we we do add on a few enhancements first recently we came up with a quadro flow cooling system basically yeah, this is for high thermal design power processor where normally your heat sink need to design quite thick so we actually did some patented design where the thickness is only 27 mm. Okay, so this is very useful for small 
small areas or small allowance. Okay, we have the our usual add-on, the R manager and wise pass, which we we discussed previously, and those that's for networking, and then even for defense, we have added in a specific. Uh, we we do provide all this as you mentioned, but we also provide a specific type of RAM that can be screwed down. Okay, this for uh, to prevent vibration. Okay, so these are some of the add-on new features that we have, uh, and for customers who are dealing with com, uh, typically there will be a lot of questions when it comes to the tech side, especially like signal integrity, your schematic diagram, your your your, your mechanical design. So what we do is that uh, we you can actually use our pre-validated reference design. We have a website also. This website where you can click and then you can download all the schematic layout design. Uh, mm -hmm. or, or, or or tools, development tools that you can need to build your own career board. Okay, so this is one. Now, after you build your own career board, I mean, in terms of the design layout, you finish it. Sometimes you may want a third party like Avantech to really assess is there an issue or is, could there be some EMI shilling to be done or maybe certain uh, uh, signal integrity to double check. You can send it to us. If you need NDA, we do not mind. You send it to us, let us review. We will usually feedback within one to two weeks. So once we review that, we take into account all these uh, all these uh, different uh, requirements. Let us know. We, we actually help save you. You do not need to fabricate. You do this after you fabricate. Address all the issues. Now, next few is regarding uh, displays. We look at uh, for for the last mile of com of most of the customers' system integration job is to put all the components together. So we actually recovered the the board level. Now let's look into the the some of the other components. You have to make sure all these components are working well. So you had to find the correct fit for everything. So what we do is that, and then another concern for most customers for this is that is there longevity support? Normally when you look at RAM, flash, and all these, these are usually short short uh, product availability. What we do is that we can commit longer. Okay, and some of the customers do ask us for customization, including displays also, uh, wireless modules also. Okay, so we provide uh, driver support or uh, longevity support. Let us know. Uh, we will, we will based on that to, to decide. Now, first is our industrial display. Actually, we have many different offerings for industrial display. So, so we have the simple LCD display kit. These are usually for equipment makers who want to build their own. You need space. You decide your own mounting. So we provide you the LCD panel. Uh, the integrated touchscreen. Uh, if you need long-term uh, product availability, like say up to seven years, eight years, come to us. We do have some that can be used long-term. Okay, we have open frame. Open frame uh, are usually more for kiosk. Kiosk. Then we have uh, the bezel type, either IP65 or the normal. And then we also have stretch display. This 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 stretch display is usually more like queuing system. I can show a signage here. I can show who queue when what when is the time. So we have many variants. An interesting one is like curved display. So curved display, typically gaming customers. We even have LED that can, uh, LED lights at the side if you want. We can customize that for you. Okay, most of our customers who ask for this curved display are usually gaming customers. So things that we can customize like wire temperature, high brightness, or, or, or even optical bonding. Optical bonding normally for, for customers who wants to, to deploy them in an ultra bright environment. Okay, so this is a quick snapshot. Or what I what I've shown earlier, okay. Another portion is on medical. So we do have certain customers who wants uh, medical grade display, or not say medical grade. I would say medical panel. Medical panels is a bit unique from the typical panel because you add in a separate board called a gamma correction board. It basically filters the two hundred fifty five shades of grey, makes it very clear and distinct. That means if your contrast ratio, the ratio between black and white is very clear and distinct. Your your colors. That is shown on the screen is very very clear okay this is very very clear so this is especially useful when you're looking at surgical uh, uh, operation surgical display okay now comes to our flash drive uh, we do have many add-on features our flash drives are not uh, just storage flash drive okay they are not typical for drive. we actually add in a lot of utilities inside that is demand for by many embedded customers Okay, so like this, we, we can run our utility. You can determine when, how long is your, uh, what's your lifespan, endurance check. It's basically based on your PE cycle, program array cycle. So if you write more, it drops more and more. So actually pre you in case when you need to, need to replace. We also have a flash security ID. You key in your own ID code, 
and then your application, uh, when you run, must always look for the ID code. The ID code cannot be closed. You must manual key in every flash drive. So if your end customer doesn't know your, your ID code, your application doesn't run. So it's more of an intellectual property protection or emergency erase in case uh, you want to erase your data. Uh, normally, customers who ask for this is military. They may want it for, uh, they, if in case they need to erase the data, they can just key a command, erase everything. Okay, but we also can, we do modification to also erase the firmware or even burn the flash. Uh, just let us know what you need. Uh, another, and uh, normally for industrial flash, uh, one key point is power failure protection. We provide both firmware and titanium cap. Titanium cap is a more reliable version where we hold a charge to let it install, to let it uh, make sure everything is written over before it shut down. Then uh, another key feature that we have is security features. We have some that meet FIPS 140-2. This is a tough spec because to pass this certification is line by line code checking. Okay, it's, it's, not, it's not cheap, but it's line by line code check. So not most flash drive makers don't meet this standard. We have some that is for, that has FIPS 140-2. Normally for police, for military, uh, they will ask for it. Uh, we have RAMs. Okay, our RAM uh, a bit unique uh, in the sense uh, we have uh, we have a thicker coat for the gold finger, 30 micron instead of the standard 3 micron, so that in a vibration prone environment, this one doesn't fade easily. Uh, and some good features that we have a software in there and thermal sensor. We have a software we call that can use presence sense detect and then can go in and then can program the actual speed of the RAM. Okay, obviously we also have uh, the ruggedized type and then anti sulfur resistor uh, is actually our uh, standard. It, it comes together as a standard. Okay, so these are the our RAM uh, design that we have. So some of the application cases that we have done so far uh, for the past few years. So I just, I just bring up two. One is our train surveillance system. This is basically uh, one of our SI actually went in, they used our embedded board. They customize a carrier board below, uh, not okay, a daughter board below, and then send it for uh, EN5011 train certified testing for surveillance project. Okay, it's for surveillance. So it's customizable. They built the whole system and send it for testing. Okay. Uh, this is another project. Uh, it's about four years uh, from the beginning when we start talking to the customer all the way to the end. Okay, uh, it's uh, going to be mass, it's actually in a mass pro stage now. So what this does is quite unique. We take our industrial motherboard, but we customize this board uh, to, uh, to, to a very deep level. Okay, the, the end purpose of this is actually a hard pacer, a programmer and tester equipment. Okay, this picture is actually the, the first gen. There's also a second gen. I am not, I'm not allowed to show the second gen because second gen is about to be released in the next two months. So what it does is that uh, you can use this to program and also test the hard pacer. The hard pacer is a small device that is during surgery put near the heart to pace the heart lah, okay, and to program to a certain beat. Okay, this device is critical. It cannot be hacked. So this whole system can't be hacked. So we add in a lot of security features. We actually utilize Intel boot guard where the keys uh, need to be hashed through TPM and both the manufacturer and the end customer have their own keys that is hashed. No one knows the actual keys. So in case the manufacturer uh, want to do a sabotage or the or the many or the end customer, they can't do anything. They want to update any BIOS that both keys must match. So this is a very tedious process. Uh, we have fast boots. We have a security boot also enhanced inside. They're running Linux, uh, Windows, Green River Linux. So this is a very unique project that took uh, us about uh, four years. Okay, our key success factor. Our box is already EFT level four. So in terms of design wise, no issues. Okay, uh, it's really designed for level four. So they really save them in terms of certification cost. Okay, and we are ready to customize. If you want it, let us know. We can customize it for you. Okay. Now I come to my last slide. Basically, uh, to summarize everything, uh, to recap this purpose of our uh, embedded, our this entire embedded core design service is show customer. Uh, the Avantech is not positioned itself as just a pure hardware platform provider. We are not just hardware platform provider. We want to support you to speed up your IIoT or, or industrial or, or IoT projects, okay, or your equipment make, or your equipment design. 
So we have a lot of value add on service, uh, such as software service, firmware service, and also a lot of industrial peripherals, which you can take, use and customize. Okay, so uh, I come to the end of this session. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to speak or write in the chat box. Thank okay. you, Erwin, yeah. for sharing with us uh, the solutions and products that we can uh, we can offer to the customers. So now we will proceed to the Q&A sections. You can uh, open the mic and ask the questions, or you can also uh, type in the in the chat box. Also can. Please feel free to ask any questions. Yeah, any question for Edwin or any question for AC. So if you have any questions, you also can email to me if you need it. So uh, if there's no questions, uh, I think we'll end it here. So if there's anything, you can just email to me or talk to us direct. Okay, Ken. Okay, thanks for thanks for joining this event. Thanks, guys. Hey, thanks everybody. Yeah.